What's up, guys? Welcome to the I Don't Get It podcast. This is Nan. Lauren. Ashley. And <laughs> Ashley's eating a strawberry. And we have special guest, sought after psychotherapist, basically America's therapist and my therapist, Dr. Mike. Hey. Dr. Mike. Dr. Mike Dove. Thank you for having me back. We love having you on. I so love you all. this is like so perfect because all three of us have actually really been wanting to do a podcast on positivity. And yep. we are now officially one month into 2019. And, you know, everyone's always, like, making resolutions, but also with resolutions, I feel like we all kind of fuck up sometimes because we kind of set these unrealistic expectations for ourselves that can then put pressure on yourself. But basically, we just wanted to talk to you about how to think, act, and be happy, and that is actually the title of your latest book, right? It sure is. Chicken Soup for the Souls. <laughs> think, act, and be happy. That's the formula. Which is so iconic that you, you did a Chicken Soup for the chicken Soul. Soup I know. Book. Let's talk so about cool. it. How did that come about? I, I, I'm really excited about this book. And, you know, I think you're right. At this time in our world, we need more positivity. So I've always been a fan. Uh, I sat down with Chicken Soup and we were just sort of talking about cognitive behavioral therapy and how I really train people to use their brains to just do common sense things, which is what cognitive behavioral therapy is. Mm-hmm. And they said, well, what if you chose some stories and we picked stories together and you told readers how they're actually training their brains to be their own therapist and then also give readers journal exercises so that they can use these strategies. And I said, yes, I would love to do that. Absolutely. Um, And, and, you know, a lot of the stories I have to tell you when I was reading through them, I cried probably 40 or 50 times. (laughs) Can we stop and just talk about chicken? That's what chicken soup for the soul is supposed to do. You're supposed (laughs) to bawl your eyes out. As like a seven-year-old, I was bawling my eyes out. Did you guys have that? I couldn't. My mom got every new one. I couldn't read them without. It's just too much. It's... I loved it, like Love. Chicken Soup for the Teenage Soul yes. and all of them. The pet hundreds. lover soul's a killer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. It's just dogs. such a genius idea because I feel like you're reading other people's stories and you basically know you're like not alone and other people are going through the same stuff. What are You said you cried, so what are some of the stories that like stuck out to you? Because one that stuck out to me was about this couple that had paralysis, right? Yeah, These two people. so... You know, it's so funny because I have people come coming to me to my office all the time and and it's sort of the oh god, I'm thirty eight now, I'm just too old to find a boyfriend or a girlfriend. And you know, it's all about our mindsets, right? So, you know, this incredible couple, true story, uh their stories in, in the book. Uh they were both in a wheelchair, both from accidents, right? And, you know, so we have we tell ourselves these stories and we put these limits on ourselves. Well, mm-hmm. guess what? They met at a wheelchair race, yes. right? So look at these yeah. two ballers. They're saying, you know what? I could sit at home and feel sorry for myself and say, well, gosh, now that I'm in a wheelchair, I'm never going to meet somebody. Well, guess what? They put themselves out there. They fell in love at a wheelchair mm-hmm. race. And so then sweet. and then they decided they want to start a family, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they visited their doctor, a fertility specialist. And it was sort of like, well, you know... You, since you're in a wheelchair, it's going to be really difficult for you to carry a child. We're going to have to, you know, do all this, these special things. And then they had a kid she, and no she way. carried the child. Wow, right. And impressive. it's sort of this, this medical miracle. Uh-huh. It was, and, and I read that story and I was like, it's, they tried on the, um, the sister-in-law mm-hmm. at, for like a year or something. And yep. I, and then it was That's just meant to be that she was supposed to carry that baby. You know, it wasn't meant to be in the sister-in-law. Like wow. she, she visualized herself. it in a dream as well before. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is crazy. Cause a lot of people visualize things. Like I remember someone reached out to me cause we put this out in the Facebook group, like to get questions and someone asked actually DM me on Instagram saying that they wanted to lose weight. And I know you talk about overcoming obesity in the book, but this person pictured themselves skinnier in the mirror. Mm-hmm. And it. she said that it helped. It absolutely does. I mean, listen, if you visualize something, you know, there's this Olympic gold medalist who said that he always would visualize his, uh, you know, his uh, swimming um, and his sets and what he was going to do before the race in his mind's eye, right? And, and so we all do that. And, and the more we see ourselves not 
making mistakes and making a fool of ourselves, which is what a lot of us do when we get inside our own heads. Mm -hmm. But if we change that self-talk and we see the best case scenario and we see ourselves succeeding and we see all the little micro steps we need to make to make that big goal happen Mm -hmm. for ourselves, it's a lot easier to carry out in the real world, right? So I I think it's just an incredible common sense strategy. Um, And I help people to break that down in the chicken soup book, right? So, you know, I have people say, okay, here's your goal. Here are the 10 micro steps, write them down, right? Just like really simple things that people can do to train their brains to be a little bit happier or to Mm -hmm. achieve these goals. Or now that it's sort of into 2019 and it's the time of year when people are actually giving up their news resolutions yep. because they failed, <laughs> yep. um, you know, how do we keep, how do we keep them up and how do we keep them to, to, um, how do we reframe them, I guess, to be more sustainable so that we can keep them up. Right. I just feel like in general, and I don't know if you guys have like personal things to share, but like sometimes staying positive is like actually such a hard thing to do, which like you would think it sounds easy. Like just say, just look on the bright side. But for some reason, this one person wrote this down and I totally related to it. And um, she wrote in the Facebook group, her name's Brooke. She wrote, what's the one thing you would suggest to switch out of your funk? And I feel like a lot of the times, like I'm always like, I'm in such a funk right now. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's such an even weird thing to say, because what is that? Like, what is a funk? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like such a weird. Yeah, it's funny. Jared says the exact same thing. He says the same word. Yeah, and I don't get it. It's like such <laughs> and I don't get it. Like, why do I get in these funks? How do you get out of them? Well, the funny thing about funks is when we feel a certain way and we have low serotonin and or dopamine because of something that's happening in our lives, what happens? It creates this downward spiral because when something bad happens and our neurotransmitters are affected or parts of the brain are affected, um, some parts go um, hyperactive and some parts of the brain go quiet, we are less likely to do things that are going to get us out, right? Mm -hmm. We want to sit at home all day. We want to isolate. We want to feel sorry for ourselves. We want to watch TV, not exercise and eat carbs, right? Yeah. The carbs thing is so real. So that's the funk. (laughs) That's definitely a stress. Like stress eating, you need carbs. Like that's interesting. I need to know about it. Well, and (laughs) carbs and sugar release serotonin in the brain, whereas fat releases dopamine. So if you are stressed out, you're craving serotonin. So that's why people crave carbs, right? Right. Neurochemically makes sense. But I'm always like, I deserve in and out. I'm like, (laughs) yeah. Oh, God, I'm missing in out. Um, <laughs> but here's the solution. Are you not eating so, in and out right now? Um, rarely. Oh, I like a good grass fed burger every now and You're again. So I like a good burger, <laughs> King I love burger uh, like I had today. But here's what you do so every <laughs> chapter in Think, Act, and Be Happy, I start with the think, changing your thoughts, and right. then changing the way you act, except for one chapter, and it's about getting out of a funk. Mm. And so if you're in a funk, don't start with your thoughts because if you're in a funk, you're probably using paralysis by analysis and you're like going around and around yes. like a broken record. Right, it's record. like the loophole, the, the loophole of hell. Yep. Yeah. And it's and and we just oh god, why did I do that at work or why did I say that or you know and we just we we get ourselves into this really deep hole. So what you have to do is you have to act your way out of the Mm -hmm. funk of feeling and thinking, right? Mm -hmm. So you just have to do something. And when I say something, I literally mean like anything. Like if you're on the couch feeling sorry for yourself, do the dishes, clean the house, go to the grocery store, take a bath, anything that's going to bring you pleasure or um, right. Add a little productivity to your day. Right. Just do it. Just yeah. get put your get out of the pajamas. Mm-hmm. Get dressed. Mm-hmm. Take a shower, even when you don't feel like it, and walk out the door and just do something. And, and that that's the best yeah. strategy to get it's out of. It's funny a how like just taking the trash is, can just give you a little spurt. Of yeah, happiness, and then you do right? the dishes, and then you go out and get a coffee, and then something leads to the next. I gotta like when I wake up in the morning, I need that one thing to spark my day. Or and if I don't do that one thing, then I won't. I won't leave. And there was a girl in our Facebook group who actually this leads into that. She goes, how do you just get yourself to get out of the yes. door? Yes, I saw Like, because she just feels, I think she feels anxious to leave a little agoraphobic. So how do you just bring yourself to step out of the house? Yeah. Um, one baby step at a time. Yeah. So there was this incredible story. And it's so funny. There's actually a story about The Bachelor in the book, which, <laughs> which I love. Okay. We have to share it. So there was this woman who had debilitating agoraphobia, panic attacks. So Ugh. this debilitating anxiety disorder. She literally said uh, in her story that someday she couldn't 
get herself to leave the house to get the mail. Mm -hmm. Like it was that bad, right? That's sad. And one baby step at a time, she taught herself by leaning in with fear, with that anxiety that Mm -hmm. she could do it, right? So baby step by baby step at a time. And and then sure enough, there was this guy who was on Trista's season of The Bachelorette (laughs) and he had debilitating panic attacks and he read some of her writing and they got in touch and she wrote his book. Wow, yeah. that's wow. so interesting. And then this woman actually taught herself. I love how herself, excited you get when I mean, like, people connect in life. I get just as co- excited. Right? I know, it's so it's weird. It's like such a cool story, right? <laughs> it and is. it's so inspiring. And then she taught herself that she was going to conquer her fear of flying. And so she just got on the damn plane. Yes. And guess what? <laughs> Soon enough, Celine Dion reached out and said, no. I'm, I want to interview you to write my biography. No way. Wow. And she had to fly to Vegas. Right. And she thought to herself, oh, my God, thank God I had those baby steps. And I taught myself that Should I could first go to the mailbox and then talk to a stranger and then get on a plane. Because mm-hmm. guess what? She got the job. Wow. And she ended up co- um, writing wow. Celine Dion's biography. And she would have never had that had she not baby stepped her way out yeah. of that fear right That's Celine incredible. Dion needs an audiobook just by the way <laughs> Celine <laughs> probably I would, you know I would listen to that <laughs> the most ironic thing that could happen and the most amazing thing would be if Celine had a podcast where she just talked to herself like yes. just a stream oh, of, stream of consciousness. because when so you t- see her in con- she's so emotional passionate and when you see her in concert she just she goes up on these just tangents. wants to talk like yeah. the most random stuff I think it would be a huge yes. hit I would love to listen to her and Lady Gaga talk because they're so obsessed with each other. Oh, oh are they? <laughs> there we go. Affection with Lady Gaga. Number one podcast in yeah, the universe. Oh my God, what an incredible podcast that would be. Y'all, I'm getting married. If you didn't know that, actually, If you didn't everyone. know. If you didn't know. I know I've just been pestering you with those points over the past seven months. Um, <laughs> so there's this thing called Zola that we're using in conjunction to our Crate and Barrel registry. So we're registered at Crate and Barrel, but on Zola's website... You can basically put all your registries together onto one site. Get um, all that free shit, man. Get all that so, free shit. It's so genius. Yeah, yeah it's Why really, didn't really good. This before. I know. I mean, really, it's the internet changed registries. So Zola is a wedding company that will do anything for love. It is reinventing the wedding planning and registry experience to make the happiest moment in a couple's life even happier. From engagement to wedding to decorating your first home, Zola is there for you. It's going to combine compassionate customer service with modern tools and technology, all in the service of love. All right, so Zola is the easiest way to plan your wedding and your registry. You're going to join 500,000 couples who have already used Zola. It takes the stress out of wedding planning because you're going to get a free wedding website, your dream wedding registry. You're going to uh, um, have affordable save the dates and invitations and easy like to a, use planning tools. It's and like a one-stop shop. This, it really place, is. this is where you can put those awkward questions like, can I bring my kid or do I have a plus one or you know those terrible questions you don't want to text the bride like the week before her wedding also it's been so easy because i've had so many friends get married this year if i just type their names into google together usually their zola comes up and i know what to buy them and where the wedding is because i usually lose the invitation yeah <laughs> And when we're talking about building your dream registry, guests are going to love the fact that there's free shipping and returns, price matching, and more. You can also create funds, which is what Jared and I need to do in addition to our crate and barrel registry. We need to create like a, a future home fund. So they have like your honeymoon fund, your future home, your new puppy, anything you want. If it's like, hi, don't need anything more, any more stuff for the house, leave your money here. Pretty you sure you can do that. I think it'd be nice for Jared and I to like at least label that honeymoon. future home. Oh, future yeah, home. future home. Um, also, you can use you can register for gift cards like Delta, Southwest, Hulu, Home Depot. Holy Those things moly, are very useful. We in need your airline ones. Life. So <laughs> that's that's to start your plan. free wedding website and also get fifty dollars off your registry on Zola. Go to go to Zola dot com slash idgi. That's Fifty dollars off your registry on Zola. Go to Zola Z O L A dot com slash I D G I. Okay, wait. Um, so you're talking about visualizing and like visualizing the future, but 
what if like visualizing the future you see negative things and that just brings you down i i know somebody who does this Mm -hmm. so if you see negative things i help people to delete them and you can delete them through a couple different methods you know um i use a lot of hypnosis as you know because i just gave you my new um (laughs) hypnosis book galley um tell them what it's called and when it's um, coming out real quick so this is called your subconscious brain can change your life uh it's out in march um but you can also use standard cognitive behavioral therapy techniques and you know the most common one is just looking for the contrary evidence so if Mm -hmm. you in your visualizations are seeing negative things unfolding Mm -hmm. you really need to give yourself a reminder that all of the things in your past that you worried about resolved themselves on their own or weren't as bad as you thought there was this woman in the chicken soup for the soul book who created a worry jar and she wrote down all of her worries and then she went back to the jar yes. and she realized that none of them came true Wait, or they just like went away. That's a really yeah. good I have, idea. I you should an, tell your friend to start yeah. a worry jar. Yeah. I have an app that's called Worry Watch. I don't even know if it's still in use, but I use it in my most like anxious time in my life. And it was, you wrote down what you're anxious about and then you literally come back a couple days later, see if that thing came true. And I was like, None of them came true. I'm an idiot. It's kind of like training someone who's OCD. Like if you touch yeah. that table a million times, yeah. how, nothing, did that, nothing bad's going to happen. Gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Why don't you tell me to download that when I was waiting for text messages from people? Uh, we, always say, we always say you're going to get responded. Yeah, but I'm always like, this person, I'm never going to talk to this person again. Have you talked to that person? Yes, I've talked to that person yeah. again. You know? It's yeah. so true. You talk about taking baby steps. Um, my only question is, Okay, no, no, no. It's not the baby steps. It's more of like you say, like, be active, you know, like get up and do that. Get up and distract yourself. Is there any way that those little motions that get you through can be suppressing these feelings? And then like you realize one day you sit still and you're like, holy moly. Well, I I think with a lot of... that makes sense? That's a great question because... It, it also, a lot of people are anti be positive because they feel like mm-hmm. you're just masking something that you're really feeling. So what is the line there? Is there yeah. a gray area? Yeah, I think it is finding where the pendulum doesn't swing too far in the other direction. Because I think it is possible that some people just go, go, go and never stop to take a moment. And, you know, I like the s- guy who fucking did the fire festival. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. What a good documentary. <laughs> huh? Just watch yes. that. Yes. Like, Billy McFarlane. Like, it'll all work out. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Just keep going. Yeah. Just keep moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I always tell people that you just have to stop and take a moment and, you know, and this is a mindfulness technique, you know, right here and right now, notice what's on your mind and in your heart. And so it's not suppressing that. And it's not a matter of not coming to terms with it. And there are times that we have to really honor that. But then sometimes when it just starts to just loop around in your brain and you're going down the rabbit hole, that's when you use action. But, you know, Mm -hmm. to your point, I think there are some people who just ignore things and just keep going, keep going. And then they, um, straight guys do this a lot. Sorry to generalize, but I found that in my practice, it's true. It's the straight guys who come to me and they're like, well, I have nothing. I'm a baller and I make X Uh amount of money. I, I have a beautiful girlfriend Mm -hmm. why do i feel so empty? why am i not happy why am i not happy and you know and i think there is something about um gender roles and the way men and women are trained in society um and you know some of it i think is biological because of women's higher levels of oxytocin which you know Mm -hmm. is cuddling and connection and testosterone depresses oxytocin production so you know i think there is something that is actually hardwired there um but yeah i think it is finding the middle ground and honoring your feelings but not getting sucked down by the negative ones right all right guys we are one month into 2019 and let's be real we are all looking for a fresh start this time of year and for most of us our new year's resolutions are about being healthier obvs so But the thing is, is that resolutions are hard. They're so hard that 80% of us fail at sticking to our resolutions each year. There's no quick fix when it comes to better health. It's all about really like starting good daily habits and actually sticking to them. This is where Ritual comes in. So Ritual is the obsessively researched vitamin for women. Ritual's essentials have the nutrients most of us don't get enough from our diets, all in their purest, cleanest forms, no shady additives, or ingredients to actually do more harm to your body than good. All you guys have to do is take two easy-to-take capsules, which will provide nine nutrients you need to build a stronger foundation for better health. 
Lauren, you started taking these and I, you've loved them. Yeah, I, I needed some more energy. So I was like, I'm going to start taking these vitamins. So Ritual has Essential for Women and it's a multivitamin. So from D3 to Omega-3, Ritual Essentials for Women fills the gap in a woman's diet, all with a fresh minty flavor and no fishy aftertaste that we all want to throw up after. Exactly. Ritual is that. also delivered. A subscription is easy to start and it's easy to snooze. It's only a dollar a day to have all the essential nutrients your body needs delivered each month. Exactly. And guys, remember, better health doesn't happen overnight. So start your year with Essential for Women, a small step that helps create a healthy foundation for 2019 and beyond. All you guys have to do is visit ritual.com slash get it, G-E-T-I-T, to start your ritual today. That's ritual.com slash get it. All right, back to the podcast. I want to, um, do you guys have any like personal experiences where you feel like you go really negative? Because I wanted to ask Dr. Mike for us personally and then go into like what everyone, Um, what our listeners submitted. I was actually just talking to Jerry about this at dinner the other day. I was like, does it annoy you that I'm always positive and I always think it's going to work out? And that like ever since we've been together, because whenever I had ebbs and flows, it was always romantic, romantically connected. Mm -hmm. So I was like, is it annoying that, like, I never have a bad day? Like, that I never feel like I'm in a funk because he does feel like that a mm-hmm. lot. And I, I'm i like, that must be really annoying to you. Do I seem too, like, static? Right. And he said, no, he loves it like that. Hmm. Do you feel like you – so you never have bad days ever? I don't think I have bad no. – I don't think I've had a bad day in a long time where I wasn't, like – Even if something like, terrible yeah. happens to you, you're just like, okay, I'll fix it. Right. Yeah. 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 I feel like very capable in the moment. Yeah. Right. Like you can handle the, yeah, like the yeah. negativity. Well, yeah. you guys Negative are the yin and yang, well. you know? Sometimes that works. Yeah. yeah. Yin and yang. Yeah. That's perfect. And if there is a, a moody person in a relationship, it's good to have somebody who's a little bit more stable to sort of right. yeah. uh, balance them out. Right? That's what I was going to say because I'm like the ultimate optimist, always have been, and he's such a pessimist. And I don't get like super annoyed at it. I only think, I only get annoyed when he's like, we'll see, or like maybe that'll happen, or that would be nice, it'll happen. And I'm like, can you please just say, change it's your going to happen? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're excited for it to happen that's the only like frustrating thing it's like we'll see we'll see sounds like you're putting it off and it's passive and it's right. not like taking action and in a way i'm sure ashley's like manifesting it too right oh yeah like- absolutely because you're training your brain with selective attention right. and confirmation bias what you put in your mind your brain will naturally look to find confirmation of, of what it believes to be true that's confirmation bias and also selective attention where whatever you say to yourself and then look around the world and say red 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 you know you're your eye goes to the to that red can I see over there, right. even though there's the mm-hmm. same amount of red in this room right. than there was five minutes ago. Right. Um, I'd also really like to reprogram Jared's brain with little hypnosis yeah. and CBT yeah, to see where the root of that is. Sure he, was so he would be up to it. Maybe he? we should have him on the podcast yeah. sometime where yeah. he gets hypnotized. It's crazy when I hypnotize people and they find the voice that is like the root of their negativity and the lack of optimism. And it's sort of the, you know, because hypnosis, you can find memories and things feel really real. Yeah. And and I say to them sometimes while they're in a trance, what does that voice say? You know, I have them rewind the tape of their lives yeah. and they'll say something like, it's never good enough or right. what's wrong with you? Mm-hmm. And I yeah. say, whose voice is that? It's usually dads, yeah. <laughs> sometimes yeah. moms, but yeah. usually, usually dads. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, you know, we we kind of reprogram that, right? Yeah. Because there are a lot of roots for all of us as human beings. You know, I, I certainly had a dad who was very, um, who had very high standards, you know, and there was a lot of perfectionistic tendencies. So mm-hmm. I had to work to, uh, right. <laughs> against those and I had to reprogram myself because yeah. otherwise it's just, it's, it's too much. It's crazy how like how you're raised is so just your biology. It's insane. Yeah. And then how our biology and our genetic tendencies can be turned on or off by mm-hmm. our environment. Mm-hmm. So if you have a tendency for one of these genes that affects certain levels of neurotransmitters, you know, the way genes can be expressed or turned on uh, through your environment, but then, you know, through all of these different techniques, we can turn them off. Right. And, you know, lifestyle too. Mm-hmm. So, you know, friends and connection and Right. exercise and diet and i don't want to say that jared's like this grumpy man who's always like down he's definitely not it's just our it's just interesting the way we look 
at the future so differently and like what we are capable of Mm -hmm. because he just always has a sense of doubt about it and i have no sense of doubt so we're like i know that i'm weird and i'm not always going to be right but i I like that though because you know there has to be a better way to be because i'm i'm probably i skew more towards jared and it's like i don't think you do 100 i think dr mike knows i've paid to literally pretty, pretty like when you talk to her like on the surface you'd think she's positive until like Deep until down, something happens and then she's like really like nothing will be better it's like no things right. will be better yeah. right you, like i yeah. rather it's interesting because i wonder if jared feels this way I think like i does. rather i, think, I rather prepare myself for the worst outcome that's me yeah. too but yeah, i think awesome. that that's bad like i wish i was a little more like ashley maybe not all the way but just like more towards do you know what i'm yeah, saying clicking because that dial either up by way one or two. it's one it's that saying where like worrying if you worry like you're gonna the outcome's gonna be the same no matter right, what. Yeah, right. So that's something that I've definitely learned in my times. older years. Everyone should tattoo that on themselves. <laughs> yeah, it's so boring. Won't do shit yeah. on your forehead, Period. like yeah. post Milan. Well, Lauren, do you have any moments where you feel like you're super negative? Um, at times, not like I always think everything will be fine. I think I've just yeah, been trained under Ashley. I think everything will be fine. But like moments where, like, yeah, I just not feel good enough is basically instagram probably instagram has created a lot of sadness someone wrote about comparing. that in the group right? yeah and comparing yeah that's the only time i really look i'm like oh well, i'll never be Haley baldwin really and i'll never <laughs> well, like, have her legs comparison. really so you know that's like kind of where reality checks in well and in those moments personalization you know so we talked a little bit about pessimism and paralysis by analysis but one of the other pitfall thought patterns is personalization and when yeah. you look at instagram it's it's that God, what's wrong with me? Why am I not as fabulous, you know, gorgeous, you know, fill in the blank, whatever you want to fill yeah, in like- that blank with. And, and and we sort of look for evidence of why we're not good enough, right? But we, you know, those are idealized, cropped, filtered photos you guys to make yourself feel better out there definitely follow all of the, like the real celebrity instagram oh yeah exposing celebrity exposing surgery things. exposing celebrity photoshop all they that do stuff, so yeah. much of the stuff that doesn't have like all the face tune all to the it. filters yeah all the and, filters yeah. face tunes, and then they do like before and after plastic surgery and i mean i'm sure the celebrities hate it but it really makes the regular girl feel so much better <laughs> or watch the fire festival documentary aren't you all like, amazed <laughs> when you meet celebrities in real life how they don't look anything like they yeah, do in the magazine their skin is so like leathery it's usually the skin that looks different because yeah. you're like oh i can see how much makeup you have on right, right. now yeah 100 so you know i've been getting my back under control you know trying i'm trying to do all of like the beauty things i realize i've just been lazy like I'm wait gonna, what did you say your back knee? my back knee yes what's back knee it's pimples on your back come yes. on now. well maybe someone didn't know what it was <laughs> Said it fast. So thank God, <laughs> thank God I uh, cleared up my back knee because I was getting gross and I've been using BioClarity and it is clean and green skincare brand that has products that just work. Like all I want is my pimples to go away. That's all I need. So I use the clear skin routine. It's for combination oily and breakout prone skin. I just... Uh, comes with everything you need for clear, glowing skin. It's a three-step regimen, gets rid of breakouts, clears, and calm skin, and is packed full of detoxifying nutrients. It's also antioxidant and includes a super special ingredient only BioClarity uses, and that's Floralux from plants. Um, it's three steps, cleanse, treat, restore. How Have you felt your skin change like since using this, like your back, Lauren? I just... The, there's just no more pimples. There's just no more pimples it's on crazy. my back. Yeah. It's crazy because this this product is more than just a cleanser, guys. It actually nourishes and soothes your skin. And it also helps with redness. So if you have hyperpigmentation and you want to even out your skin tone and texture for a healthy glow, definitely try the clear skin routine from BioClarity. If you guys want to get healthier, more radiant skin, all you have to do is go to bioclarity.com. And right now, our listeners, when you purchase a skincare routine, will receive a free clarifying mask with your order. Ah! That's a $25 value for free. But you guys have to enter our code Get It at checkout. So again, go to bioclarity.com, get your free clarifying mask when you purchase a routine when you use our code Get It at checkout. Okay, back to the podcast. Um... Remember how you were saying questions, like when people look at Instagram, but I feel like that's how you fall in a negative thought pattern. You're like, why didn't I get this? Why didn't I do this? And someone 
wrote in a question, but I wanted to share what I'm going through right now personally. Mm-hmm. So basically the company that I worked for, Clever, like went under in November. So I got laid off as like my main hosting job. And so I took this producing job for three months and I feel like it's like on one hand, I feel like I should be excited and blessed that I had like um, a source of income for these three months. But really, I feel so behind and stuck. And like every day I go into work, I'm like, all these other people are like hosting and like, I feel like I should be hosting. You know what I mean? Like I feel so behind and someone wrote this in that I wanted to share because I feel like um, I felt the exact same way. They said, basically it was, it was somewhat like how to not be envious of like other people and like compare yourself to other people and like where you are in life, like how to not be negative basically about where you are in life. The question was, yeah, I don't I mean, know why I thought I, I, wrote I relate to that too. I know you struggle with that. I think I struggle with that too, because my career is, you know, unlike my boyfriend who, you know, his career is straight and narrow mm-hmm. like it's like mm-hmm. yep. he knows how much money he's going to be making every year and yeah. you know it's, it's it's predictable and especially when you're in careers that are a little bit more up and down like right. ours are um it's it's really hard when you're not doing well right, right. and this, you're sort of on the down this is what lexi wrote in sorry i found it i just like totally missed it she said I love this idea. I think a really good question would be how to stay positive, be happy for other people when they're doing better than you. It's not the same, but like in the same vein. She said, for a big example, like you both want a job and your friend gets it. You want to be happy for them, but you're jealous. Or even something simple, like you're both out one night and guys are all hitting on a friend instead of you, which Mm -hmm. would normally lower most people's confidence. So basically that comparison to like another person's life, which kind of leads into Instagram, I guess. Yeah. I I mean, I I would say it's a two-step process. You know, the first is making room for the human part of yourself, you know? So I always ask people, okay, what is the very human part of yourself feel right now? And what does your ideal self Mm -hmm. feel? So it's okay to make room for the jealousy that your friend got hit on or got the job. And then ask yourself, and what does that ideal part of yourself feel too? It's Mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm happy for her. It's, It's okay to hold both emotions at the same time. And I think so many of us think that we have to be this perfect person and there's only room for one emotion. And that's when we get hard on ourselves, right? It's like, why am I feeling this way? Why am I feeling so jealous? What's wrong with me? Am I not a kind person? No, it's like, you're human. You wanted the job. You're jealous. I get it. I felt that way before too. That's why I loved that scene in this past week's Bachelor because Cassie was crying Mm -hmm. while she she said, I'm "I'm happy happy for her. her." Yeah. 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 So she's like bawling, but she is actually on some level happy too, right? Yeah. That's very nice for it to even say. I know, you know? I know. Right. But most of the time, I think Dr. Mike's right. It's like you feel that feeling. You're like, am I a bad person? But then you also have that ideal version of yourself where you're like, no, but I am. Like yeah. that is so great for that person. And then we, I think the second part of that is realizing, you know, I always go back to that quote. Remember that at the end of the day, the race is long, but it's only with yourself, right? Yeah. So we're all going to have the ups and the downs and the guy who hit on your friend is going to end up being a psychopath and it's like oh in like six months you're going to say oh i dodged a bullet or you're going to get a job that's even better if we look back on our own lives and we see our you know the ups and downs and how they've all made sense and they've all brought us to this place it helps us to find peace in whatever happens Mm -hmm, right right. it's it's like i've been through some crazy yeah it's like just crazy things personally so when i'm at work it's like i should just remind myself to just go along for the ride and like it's just all gonna work out is that basically like yeah and and it's going to teach you something you know i mean it's something that i come back to over and over again you know when when i went to usc one of my most valuable experiences was interning and i did a different internship every year and i learned so much about what i don't want to do Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know i can like it was so valuable right i've like on a different journey than everyone else i graduated high school with like everyone did the you know they went to college they did it now they're in their however many years of working and they're engaged or they have a baby or something like that and i'm nowhere near that but i'm zero jealous because i feel like they either missed out on like a life lesson i learned on one of my like many like right. career journeys yep. or relationship journeys and also to you Naz, with like the hosting all this stuff mm-hmm. i always look back at like sylvester sloan didn't like sell rocky until he was was it Sylvester Stallone? I don't know. I don't know. Like all these actors well, didn't Sylvester make Sylvester definitely what took a while. It was a, it was later like they were 40s 50s there's that amazing like, right. thing we need to find this whole oh, list of somewhere. actors and writers and people like who didn't Oprah. fulfill like, their yeah, dreams yeah. until later in their life and it's like if you're comparing age-wise like you got time yeah mm-hmm. i think that's a good thing to remember 
Okay, so you guys have heard Lois in the background playing with her toys. It's because she is like so healthy and happy and just flourishing because she's been eating Ollie. Whenever you get a new dog, you kind of like wonder what should they really eat because you got a fresh a lot puppy, of you know. A lot you in could these give dog this foods. dog a, like a clean start with clean yeah. food. You you don't have to introduce it to the the shitty brands right at the get go. Yeah, yeah. So no. we got our Ollie. Yeah, so we got Ollie. And she is loving the taste of it. It's fresh meals for dogs with real ingredients, not like byproduct crapola, um, that people can eat and deliver to them on a regular schedule. They beat out store-bought food 10 to 1 on the palp. Palatability, palatability scale, which, which means dogs actually love the way Ollie they tastes. They munch it oh, down like little so munchies and crunchies. <laughs> There's so, nothing cuter than a dog chewing, right? I so I went online, I took a quiz, and it's basically asked about Lois if she's overweight, uh, her energy level, her breed, and they they make this specifically for your dog. And they've delivered five million meals and counting. Shipping is free, and your dog is go- isn't. And if your dog doesn't like the meals, they have a money back guarantee. Did uh, they say? Did you say that she, her breed is mixed AF? I said, I said, very mixed dog. Yes, <laughs> a mixed AF. So dog. Ollie is offering our listeners sixty. That's right, sixty percent off your first box plus a free bag of treats. Did you just say sixty? I sure did, Naz. <laughs> you get a free bag of treats at my dash Ollie. Dot com slash try slash get it. Now it's a little different, so I'm gonna read it again. That's my dash Ollie M Y dash O L L I E dot com slash try slash get it. Lauren, it's your job to put that up on the Facebook page so that yeah. people can actually understand right. that you are idea, more guys. visual people. Yes. Yeah. This is the best. <laughs> it's I wouldn't capture that right. in my brain. This is the best deal they have available anywhere. Go to my dash ollie.com slash try slash get it for 60% off plus free bag of treats. Woo 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 woo. I think I just, I'm always comparing myself to like my peers. I feel like people do that all the time too. Like, I feel like I'm, like, I was just talking to Lauren about this, too, this week. I'm like, I feel like I'm one of my only single friends. And I know, like, you mentioned that earlier in the podcast. Like, or I'm one of my only single friends. I'm one of the only <laughs> single people I know. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I feel it's just so hard to keep, like, a positive outlook on it. I don't know why. I, I, but I I'm also it. not, like, in a dark room. Right. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. it's yeah. more like I have the feeling I process it, I share it with a friend, and then I'm like, okay, I'm fine. Yeah, so but it it's is, annoying, you it, know? It I wish it didn't part happen. You, but it's, you know, I think it's so human. And, right. and it's hard, especially when you are an overachiever. You know, listen, we know that there's a correlation be- between people who are smart and anxiety because you is have... There? Yeah. So we know if you have a high verbal IQ, you actually can... Can worry more because you have so many thoughts yeah. and you can think so many things, right? Uh, and people oh. who, who aren't as smart don't have to deal with that. So, I know. so I it's know sort of this. <laughs> that's fucking annoying. I didn't know that. You know, yeah. but I think it's looking at, and it's not to say. I you wish know, I was dumb. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, listen, there's there's a bright side to either side of the coin, right? Yeah. And I think it is training our brains to look at the bright side, you know, and also realize that luck is is you know who is it Oprah that said it's where. Opportunity Prepar- meets preparation. Yes. Nope. And right. we I were talking yeah, about uh, what gyms to go to right before we started. And my moment was at Equinox. Mm-hmm. So I ran into, this was like, oh God, almost 10 years ago now. 10 years before that, right? So I'm like 20 years old. I put out into the universe, I, I, I want to be a therapist and help people. And dot, dot, dot. And maybe <laughs> one day, I don't know, I'll, I could be like the... Like the warmer Dr. Phil. Yes. You know? Oh my God, Dr. Mike, I'm going to cry. And then, and then I told that to, to a friend. And 10 years later, he ended up hosting. Have I told you the story before? No, I've never so heard So he it. hosted a national show. He got this national show um, and hosted it for a long time. Had to move to New York. Didn't see him. I run into him at Equinox. This was now. So the first story was my 20, like I was 20, I'm 30. but I'm 30. Yeah. He's like, do you ever go to grad school, Mike? Yep, yeah, got my master's, got my doctorate. You know, he's like, wow. He's like, you should meet my TV agent. And I'm like, come on. Like, I, I know you're, you're at one of those big fancy agencies. He's like, no, no, no. I, I have a feeling about this. Next day I'm in her office. She signs me. 
Wow. Three weeks later, she sends me out. TLC bought this show from the BBC called Freaky Eaters. <laughs> yes. I got it. Yes. It got picked up straight <laughs> to series. Wow. From that, I started my book career. My first book yeah. is with Penguin. I got booked on the Rachel Ray show. That started my talk show appearances. Now and you're it was just like, shitting out books. Thank God you went was, to the gym that day, right? I, I mean, I That's probably so would just be, crazy. Yeah, you know, I may not have a book career had I wow. not been at the gym that day, had I been on the couch right, feeling right. sorry for myself about yeah. something, right? It's like you never know, but it was all the preparation. Mm-hmm. And I think we'll, we are all going to have moments like that in our lives where right. it's like sometimes it's going to take 10 years, but if you just keep preparing yourself right. and asking yourself what are the lessons, there will be that point in your life where something, that magic moment's going to happen yeah. and you're going to say, oh my God. Remember when you got the Dodgers gig? Yeah. It was like, oh my God, I got it, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah. or, or, you know, or so many of the gigs mm-hmm. that you've gotten. But that's my, that's my issue is like, how do I break out of it if it's, if it's coming into my mind every day when the contrary evidence is there? Where it's like, I've had all these ups and downs it's always worked out for me. Yeah. Why can't I think like Ashley then? What is, is that like a chemical imbalance? Is that just the way I was born? Is that something that my parents instilled in me? Because they're, you know, like the Catholic black and white thing. Probably D, all of the above. Like, mm. what is it? I mean, we do have sort of a set It's point. like I get mad at myself. I'm like, stop. Yeah. <laughs> but, but here's the good news. I'm like, stop. Just shut we, the fuck we up know now. from research, God, I, I hope I'm going to recall this stat correctly, but we know that there's a 50 40 10 split. And so some of your happiness set point is genetically determined. And I can't remember if it's the, uh, which number it is, but I'm pretty sure (laughs) it's the 40 (laughs) or is it the 50? (laughs) Um, Only only 10% is determined by your circumstances. And I think it's the fifty wow. percent is how you look at things, how you look wow. at your life. So you be and your that, own action. Fifty percent is your perspective, your and perspective. you can change your perspective. You may not be able to change your circumstances or your genetic set point for happiness, but you right. can certainly through you know CBT or or just changing your mind about something through yeah. what you prove to yourself that you can do. You can change your perspective right. absolutely. So listen, if maybe Ashley's always going to be a little bit more optimistic than you, mm-hmm. but you can go two or three clicks up on that. Right. So how do I do that in the moment? You're just like, st- you just stop yourself in your mind and you're like, no, just flip it. And it's just doing that a hundred times. Or yeah. It just and you know, with, we, you do that with thoughts and you look at the contrary evidence or you do it yeah. with action and you yeah. prove to yourself. And, you know, I don't judge people, you know, their success as much by assessing their thought patterns and their feelings, mm-hmm. I look at their actions. And when I look at you, Naz, and I look at everything that you've achieved, you did it. Yeah. You know? The only you thing you literally haven't done that you want to do is like be an e-news anchor. <laughs> but yeah. like pretty much almost to that level. And right. you're only 28. Right. So all the people on E as anchors never got it until they're in their 30s. Right. And sometimes people make mistakes. You know, yeah. the casting people. I mean, remember Dunkelman, the first <laughs> yeah. season yeah. American, American Idol, Idol co-host? Yeah. I was like, wait, what? You know, so it's... <laughs> yeah. it, it's Brian it, Dunkelman. So sometimes it has nothing <laughs> to do with so you. Personalization. Yeah. Maybe yeah. you remind that casting director or that executive of your of their ex-wife who they now hate right. and they're like not hiring this Makes person so even if you were the sense. best. Yeah, that so was, that's so funny you said that and we don't have to go too deep into it but that was a hard lesson that I learned last month because I had like a meeting that didn't really go the way I wanted it to and I learned a lesson which is good. This is the positive of it that I was like, you know what? I could jump through a fucking hula hoop of fire and this woman will not give me a chance. Like it's yeah. like I... I can do everything and some people just aren't going to like you. And I honestly felt better accepting that. Yeah. Because I was like, Such a there's great nothing lesson. I can do. Like I she literally did everything. She may not always be yeah. there, you know? Yeah. She uh, may exactly. move on soon. Ashley and I were up for this. Well, we're still up for, I guess, for this <laughs> job. And I could tell, I won't say anything about it because I don't think we're supposed to, but we're up for this job and I could tell what they wanted. Mm-hmm. And I could tell that it had a lot to do with, and I, and by the way, thank goodness, because I think in this day and age, you can't have three white people on a panel. I think it's irresponsible. <laughs> and I'm mixed race, so yeah. I'm like brown. Yeah, I was going to say, you're not and white. And then there's black and there's white. And I could tell they wanted somebody who was like, I mean, look at like my friend's show, The Talk, right? It's yeah. Like one black person, one Asian person. Wait, two white people? No. The Talk. I'm missing somebody. Two Asian people now. Well, is no. she Julie Chen? Oh, Julie Chen's, Chen's off. Like she's gone. Yeah. But you know, but it's 
it's which is a whole other conversation I could have because I also don't like when it's textbook diverse because I feel like it's like you're in a text yeah, a literal like textbook black, in yeah. school yeah well, but, 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 it's but it's better it's than the alternative it's better than the alternative and I could also tell that they are always looking for a good cop and a bad cop male female they don't want three white people and they don't want three black people mm-hmm. because I mean America is made up of gay straight black white loud quiet good cop <laughs> bad cop so you know if I don't get that job and you know hopefully we will get that job offer or something but <laughs> You know, it probably has nothing to do with us. Right, right, right. right. And That's we're in that so industry true. too where yeah. like, I feel like we've talked to Jared about this too, Ashley, where yeah. it's like, Sometimes it's, they're just not what they're looking for. That's it. Or they have someone that's just like you. That's it. Of, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have to prepare and you have to be your best version of yourself, but then then let it go. Right. Let it go to, let it go to God, right. spirit, whatever you believe in, because then it has nothing to do with right. you. Um, there's some ads in the world that you know you like but there's some ads where you're like wow i actually drink this all the time and i'm excited when we get a box to the door and we are truly excited whenever we get a box jared is especially excited when we get a box of liquid iv um liquid iv hydrates you faster and more efficiently than water alone it's like three bottles to one so if you're drinking one bottle of liquid iv it's actually the equivalent of three bottles of water um it has so, so many benefits, including, well, helping winter dehydration, altitude sickness. Um, it's so it's great for traveling. Uh, it's also just good if you're heavy, if you work out heavily or if you feel some, some sickness coming on because they have vitamins in these things too. So it's vitamin C, vitamin B12. And it's more than your than the the daily amount that you need. I love it because it's just not your average electrolyte drink mix. You know, like you're not putting terrible things in your body. The thing with liquid IV is they use the cellular transport technology, CTT, and it's a specific ratio of glucose, which is pure cane sugar, sodium, and potassium. And then when it's mixed with 16 ounces of water, it basically helps your body absorb more of the water and nutrients you drink directly in your bloodstream. I literally was going to say hashtag science. Hashtag science. It's non-GMO, clean ingredients, vegan, free of gluten, dairy, and soy. And it's just a healthy alternative to traditional sugary sports drinks. So there's no artificial flavors, preservatives like Pedialyte or Gatorade. Yeah, I'm totally hating on Gatorade. I I feel bad, (laughs) you guys. But seriously, it is really good jared has this tendency to never drink water and then he'll get like lightheaded or not feel good Mm -hmm. so then he always pours himself a liquid iv vouch for him lauren yeah we were joking that tom brady always carries a flask around and inside that (laughs) flask is liquid iv that's so funny jared would be a big big fan if that were the case well it's funny because i'm kind of like jared in the sense where i don't drink that much water either and the thing with liquid iv is they can provide the same hydration as drinking two to three bottles of water in one which is crazy Liquid IV is the fastest growing hydration brand and you can find them everywhere, even Costco. You can find them at all Costco's nationwide. I love Liquid IV and I know you will too. Right now, our listeners get 20% off at liquidiv.com when you use our code get it at checkout that's 20 percent off anything you order on liquid IV's website. That's liquidiv.com promo code get it don't wait get hydrated today. I want to get. Do you guys have anything to add? Because I'd love to get to our listeners' yeah, questions. Yeah, I have, Dr. The Mike listeners. I have a lot some of questions for you, but I'm good now. All right, well, we'll chime in. Oh, I just wanted to say that I was trying to look for like the successful celebrities. That's what I was just doing on my phone. Can't find the really good list. I don't know whether or not I saved it, but it's a oh, list, a list you guys, of celebrities who didn't make it until after like 35 or something. Boggle your mind. Like yeah, like it'll make you feel so God. much better. Like you won't feel rushed and like so many. Time. Yeah, it's right, so true. We'll find it. We'll put okay. it on the group. Okay, so um, Alina wrote in, Dr. Mike, and she said, I would love some tips on staying positive when a roommate you're living with is always negative. I love this one. I've been distancing myself, and that has helped a lot, but any other tips would be great. Because that's hard, right? You live with someone so that's just living hard. in a dark cloud. How do, you, how do you handle that? Yeah, you know, we know in research that people who surround themselves with happy people are going to be happy. People who surround themselves with fit people are going to be fit. People who surround themselves with smokers, you're more likely to smoke. So, you know, maybe it's not so much about minimizing the negative in her life. You know, if she has a great apartment and she likes that 
roommate, maybe it's just more about maximizing the positive. So maybe it's just spending more time with people who are going to fill your bucket with positive energy, and then you're going to have a buffer. And so when you come home and your roommate drains you, your tank will be so fill, filled with positivity mm-hmm. that it, it won't deplete you as much. It's also right. like I, I have a friend who used to be pretty negative. She's not super mm-hmm. negative anymore. Mm-hmm. And I noticed that she was negative one day, and then now from from now on, she was just, everything you said was so negative because I realized she was so negative. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So, well, that's, yeah. So, how do you, because someone also wrote in, basically, Samantha said this, Lauren, what is the best approach with someone who is negative? negative. <laughs> how do you let them know that they are more, po- that there are more positive outlooks for their situation without diminishing their issues or concerns? Oh, exactly. I love that question, question because that's also annoying when you're venting to someone and they're like, it's going to be fine, whatever. And it's like, but I, I know, feel sorry. This I tend to do that. Yeah. So the first step before, you know, we all, and, we all do I everything. mean, this, this is uh, what I do every day, right? So I always lead with helping people to feel heard and understood first. Mm-hmm. Once we feel validated, heard, understood, then we can go into problem solving mode. Right. But as human beings, if we don't get that first step, it, it, it it's just going to bring up more defensiveness in, mm-hmm. in human beings because that's who we are. That's how we're wired, you know? So I, I would say that if you create that space and help that person to feel heard, then maybe if you give them, you know, the, it's going to, it's going to be okay. Then they're more able to hear it. Yeah. And then the other Jedi mind trick, I would say for that, you know, the roommate who's negative, mm-hmm. when you catch her or him did she say uh, in she in, say. in something a little positive give them positive feedback so mm-hmm. catch them in the act of something that you appreciate give her a treat uh, give her a little treat. <laughs> it's like a dog, it's like like, a dog. good job yeah. good job here's but, some ice cream i mean but you know we we are all wired that way you know animals and human beings alike in in some way we all want to be rewarded and acknowledged for the things that totally. we're doing right Totally. I do that with Jack all the especially, time. Especially, you know. Do you really? Especially what, do you give as, him like Fritos or something? No, like. <laughs> the ramen. When he's um, like negative a <laughs> lot too. But when I'm like, you're very talented. You did, you've done this. You've done this. You're so talented. You should try this. Mm-hmm. It's like his ears open up and he's willing to take my advice. But if right. I'm like, go do this. Nothing. Shut off. If, right. if you're in a that moment sense, yeah. where you feel like a piece of shit yeah. and somebody's like just go do this. It's like, no, but you don't understand how yeah. I feel. But if you're like, give them a little praise. Exactly. I mean, I like it when my boyfriend gives me praise and vice versa. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, Tell me more. yeah, you're right. You mm-hmm. know, we all need a little ego yep. yeah. uh, inflation every now and again. Mm-hmm. You know, nothing wrong with that. Oh, a little feedback on Jared learning and growing. Um, <laughs> I realized it today. It we was have so a awesome. news update. It was so awesome because he used to be like just very... He, like pessimistic slash what he would like to call realistic mm-hmm. where he wouldn't allow himself to dream very big like the average mediocre life was like totally satisfactory for him he was like cool down for it but it was because he didn't think he could achieve yeah oh. and now all of a sudden i was like do you remember that conversation we had in july it was actually the same week that i saw you mm-hmm. and i called him out i was like you need to allow yourself to like think that you can live like a better than mediocre life like dream big i don't know why you always halt your dreams and all of a sudden over the past couple of months he's really been like thinking he's really been believing and dreaming yeah yeah i know it's so nice that's great because like he has like big goals now not and he like you know maybe he'll he'll still say we'll see at the end of it but like he's still like is forming those dreams which is awesome yay that's so heartwarming lois is excited for dad she's so cute i can't um next Next question. Next question. It comes from... I like the body one. Body oh, okay, one. we'll go to the okay. body one. Sorry. Do you want to read it, Lauren? Okay. Um, from Emily, she goes, how to love your body even if you haven't achieved how you want to look yet. It's hard for me to love myself when I know I can strive to be healthier, but I'm impatient. That's a great one, Dr. Yeah, Mike. that's a really good one. Well, I love this story in the book about this woman who lost 150 pounds and it took her two years and she set goals Um, But I also think that if we look in the mirror and hate what we see, that's not a good place to start. And I think we all Mm -hmm. have to realize that none of us are perfect. And if you live in Los Angeles or you're in the TV business, you're going to see a lot of perfect looking people. And so we have to really own our bodies. And so whatever that means, there's this really touching story about cancer. I'm pretty sure it made it in the book. If not, 
I read it and it was almost in the book about, you know, women who have lost uh, a breast or breasts and, and learning to love your body and where that uh, self-love comes from. And you yeah. realize when people have something real, like, mm-hmm. you know, like, wow, I lost both my breasts or something. It's like, you're fine. Right. Yeah. It's like yeah. there, we all have the, that moment of, you know what, I'm not perfect, but who is? And then that goal setting and setting those specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time sensitive goals um, so that over the course of a year or two years, you can lose 150 pounds. And, you know, by the way, we followed up with that woman whose story is in the book. She's kept it off. Nice. Right. Awesome. 150 wow. pounds. I know. And in two years, that's that's fast. Yeah. I think the key word of what you just said is achievable. Yeah. Because I feel like a lot of people go wrong when they're like, I'm going to lose it in a month. You know, I want to look like this right now. But I think if you just, you know, like set a realistic expectation for yourself, then you're not let down as much. Slow and steady tends to to win the race. I mean, I do a little bit of intermittent fasting for sure. But I think people who do full keto, we know that, you know, when you look at different diets, I think a little bit of keto is actually good. But people who go full keto, Mm -hmm. we know that that diet is really good for fast weight loss. But people usually cannot stay on full keto. To clarify like keto, clar- keto is just like whatever comes from the earth, right? Uh, no, ketogenic. F- yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, so forcing your body into the state where you're always burning fat for fuel. Right. Mm. Um, it, it is similar like to, to paleo, which is sort yeah. of like that hunter and gatherer yeah. mindset. You think you confuse the... Um, keto people are really, really strict. Keto's on carbs. more intense than pa- well, paleo's yeah. no paleo, carbs too. But paleo, you can have nuts. Paleo is really eating nose to tail, and people who are you know eating as our ancestors ate. Yeah, but we now right. know that that's actually not true because our ancestors did eat grains because that's they found some say. ancient device. Yeah, of course that they were eating grains. grains. Yeah, there um, were grains in Pokemon. But, remember? <laughs> but keto is really strict, <laughs> and you have to keep a yeah. very strict log of every carbohydrate. Fun you. fact, you can have an in and out burger with no bread on Lizzie the keto has diet. those. She has, she has those every night. Is she on a keto diet? She just has the lettuce burger and she has two like a night. But not on the keto diet? No, no keto diet. For, just fun? for fun? Yeah, yeah, I know. Why that is she doing is, that for fun? It's less ca- like half the calories or something. That, that is the most psychopath two. thing. Like just eat the burger. <laughs> well, the bread there is bad. So there, there bad. you go. It's so dry. I like oh, it because there's no egg in it. I'm allergic to egg. Did I tell you this? Oh, you Did are? I tell you a new yeah, development? I, I found out. I love eggs. I can't have bananas or eggs. It's oh, the worst. Sorry. Okay. Um, real quick about the body thing, because I wanted to say I feel like women deal with it more, but that is not true since I moved to LA and have a lot of friends in the gay community. And I feel mm-hmm. like it's almost just as bad for them. What's like, is there a mantra or something people can say if they're on Instagram and they're looking at someone's body? Is it just like no one's perfect? Like, is there a little quick fix to snap out of that? I, I think it's a little spirituality and it's I'm already worthy just as I am yeah and 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 also connecting with the parts of you that make you really lovable and at the end of the day the parts that make you really lovable have nothing to do with how much body fat you have I mean it's great if you want to shred body fat I'm all about that too but it has to start with a place that's a little deeper what helps for me is watching my 600 pound life and being like, well, I'm not them. So I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> I look fantastic. <laughs> those, I mean, those stories, right? I mean, they're real they're stories. All I hosted sexual the uh, reunion special. They are? Uh, well, a lot of, I feel like 75% of the women, of the women have yeah. been they sexually are? assaulted. Oh um, my God, I didn't yeah. know that. What's really interesting <sighs> about assault is so many times uh, i found this to be true in, in people that i met when i hosted that uh, my 600 pound life reunion special Are you hosting or, oh my goodness i'm upset i watch a show every morning or it's freaky on eaters TLC. yeah and sometimes tlc wouldn't let us show these scenes because they're just they're pretty they're pretty intense right yeah. and and we were still telling an authentic story but it's you know we, we shot so much with them we couldn't show everything but mm-hmm. so many times the people who had real food addictions or got to the place of 600 pounds it was a conscious or a subconscious means to make them unattractive right. and undesirable See? to Jesus keep people Christ. away and Ugh. to keep people from sexually abusing them wow or, and, and so it, unless you process that trauma talking about going back to the root right. you know i knew that i had to help those people with that root trauma mm-hmm. before we could start changing right. the way that This brought up um, a question in my head now because how do you remain positive? I have a friend that that was robbed at gunpoint 
And I think about all the time, like how cra- she like couldn't sleep for a long time. People that go through these traumatic experiences, sexual assault, being robbed at gunpoint, like losing a child. Like, how do you remain positive after moments like that? Or do you just let yourself grieve? Well, yes and no. So there is normal grieving. If, if it's sort of an average grief that is just... I'll say a normal amount of sad that lasts and gets a little bit better every day. But if you find that you are in that hole, we know that people, some people are more prone to PTSD, right? So the right side of their brain is more active and the limbic system and the amygdala, which is sort of the emotional center of the brain, is way too active, right? And and so the only way that we can really make a difference in that is, you know, what I do is I combine clinical hypnosis with bilateral stimulation, which accesses this part of the brain, that trauma, you know, so being robbed at gunpoint gets stuck and you have to go back and you have to change that part of the brain with these advanced techniques. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's, there's actually a, in this new book, there's, there's one that people can use if, if that's them, if you've been through something um, traumatic with these audio tracks and you just, I, I just really believe that if you're suffering from trauma, you have to get one of these new modalities to access that part mm-hmm. of the brain to would that it. also go for people maybe that have been cheated on in the past and can't yeah. feel like they can see a positive outcome with a new yeah. person? Yeah. Would you suggest the same advice or something else? Yeah. I, I, I go back with uh, people who have those beliefs who, who've been cheated on. I, I, I think in the book I talk about eternal sunshine. Which book? Sunshine of the Spotless uh, Mind? Yeah. yeah. The your subconscious, subconscious book. brain can change your life. It's coming I, out in March. I, I talk about that scene with Kate Winslet who had that uh, – fictional medical procedure so that she could forget all about Jim Carrey's yeah. character, right? And hypnosis is really interesting because we know that hypnosis, and I have an, I had an EEG of my own brain done uh, using my own technique um, and also a, a brain scan done. And we, we could see all of these theta brain waves, which are really slow brain waves, which is- Sorry, I'm like still trying to process that sentence. Like, who are you? Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> so I like scan my brain with like my own method. I, I'm a brain nerd. I'm like, am I in a sci-fi a, movie I'm a right total now? brain nerd. I followed it. I was no, all I followed there. It I know. I'm like, this is fucking impressive though, guys. It's, That's so crazy. The sentence so crazy. that just came out of your mouth. Are you proud of yourself? <laughs> oh, Sorry, keep going. Little, I mean, I'm a brain nerd. But, and yeah. it was really cool though. I wanted to see it for myself. And, but we know that those theta brain waves allow your brain to not only find memories, but also delete them. So it delete makes the shit. delete button in your brain work. So if you have an Whoa. ex who you can't stop thinking about, yeah. you're not going to be like Kate Winslet, like, oh, I don't know who you are. Yeah. But you can start to delete some of the way really? that he made you feel. So you're telling so that's what us I do with people. that those of, of people listening who are in dire heartbreak, they should start hypnotizing themselves? Yeah. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. Try anything. At that point, you're like, give me anything. Give me pills. Give me anything. Or eat the food from the. Did you see Homecoming with Julia Roberts? Uh, you I haven't saw the seen first it yet, episode. Actually. No, I, haven't. I saw the first episode. All right, I Can give I ask it away. a question? Yeah, of course. Um, my way that I deal with positivity, I don't know if it's good or not, but I disregard the majority of people's problems. Like, or in my own problems, I'm just like, that's not a problem. That's not a problem. That's not a problem because you know what problems are if you're sick. Yeah, if you're, you do do If you have yeah. someone that's dying, good. I'm like, I don't yeah. give a fuck about your problems because unless you're unhealthy, someone you love is dying, yeah. you can get over it. Perspective. Yeah. Right. So is yeah. that like a healthy way to do it or... I, I'm not acknowledging people's problems really, but I, I think a, a little perspective is is really helpful yeah. because it helps to undo the pessimistic, catastrophic, worst case scenario thinking where we think, "Oh my God, this is awful," and it also helps to undo permanence, which is that illusion in the brain that makes you feel like the way you're feeling right now about this. Oh, I didn't get this job, or yeah. you know, this guy didn't call me back, or whatever. Permanent. It's permanent. That's it's something not. I it's get. Gonna yeah, yeah. It's going to pass. I'm getting better at it. But I yeah. used to do that when I was studying for tests in college. I'd be like, <laughs> if you can absorb this, and if you do really <laughs> badly on the test, what is going to happen to you? I Your could, yeah. family is happy and healthy and safe. Yeah. That's and your life matters. is yeah, for the right. for the most part going to be the same after you fail. Yeah, and yep. I never failed, but it made me feel better <laughs> yeah. going into the test. Taking a turn though, because on the other side of that coin, Le- Leanne wrote in. She said, "I would love a discussion on coping with serious illness, whether you are personally experience personally experiencing it or it's someone close to you." 
So is yeah. that basically the same of like what we were just saying? Yeah, I think surrounding yourself with other people who are in your shoes is really important. You know, it helps us to turn Heartbroken off Heartbroken that. anonymous. Yeah, that's right. Heartbroken anonymous. You know, we there's this disease called terminal uniqueness where we feel like what we're going through, that we're the only one. And when you surround yourself with other people, uh, whether you're in a group like Heartbroken Anonymous or you at the very <laughs> least read a story of somebody mm-hmm. else who's in your shoes. There's a story in the Chicken Soup book um, this woman who had cancer had to write in a group the 10 best things about cancer. And she was like, are you effing kidding me? I am not doing this assignment. And then sure enough, she got over her resistance and it was really powerful. That one brought me to tears too. I would love to see that list. Yeah, it's in in that book. Cool. Can you give us a preview? Chicken soup for Um, the soul. Two two numbers that she said. Here, let's bust bust it open. But while you look for it... Ashley Lauren, this person named Brielle wrote, how to work with people who make life miserable seven days a week. <laughs> uh, quit. No. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm, I really don't know. Make anything. miserable like they're pessimistic? I guess. So um, here are just a few of my favorites of the 10. Um, num- her number nine was, I appreciate each and every day now even mm-hmm. more than I did before. Wow. I belong to an exclusive club of fighters and survivors because she got herself to that group. Um, Number five, people tend to cut you some slack when they find out you've had cancer. (laughs) That's kind of cool, right? Get some discounts Um, at the movie theater. This is a great one. Number three, I've learned that looking out for myself is not a luxury anymore, but a necessity. Mm -hmm. Number two, I've learned to stop and smell the proverbial roses and tulips and crocuses. Is that how you said that flower? And daffodils. And number one, I'm a survivor, as my pink shirt at next year's Race for the Cure will surely attest to. I have battled my arch nemesis cancer, and for now, I have prevailed. Well, that's great. Wow. That list is killer. I just got goosebumps. You got to put that on that. your mirror every morning. Do you that's think that she was able to write that because she did go into her mission? Uh, no, I, I think that there are a lot of people in that group who were probably active, and yeah. you know, when you've had a diagnosis like cancer. You know, there's always that chance of it's going to come back. It's going to yeah. come back. Um, but we know people who go into remission, um, being a pessimist isn't just a psychological problem because of the way the brain interacts with the body. Um, in people who have had cancer or who, I'm sorry, who have cancer, the optimists were far more likely to be alive a year later than the pessimists. Wow. So no there's an actual power to so, there it's like the power of positivity. I mean, wow, this is like really Eckhart nuts. Tolle. It's fine. Do you like Eckhart Tolle, I do. by the way? Okay, I do. good. I like him a too. Lot. Do you like Malcolm Gladwell? I do. Okay, cool. I do. Just making sure they're not scam. Do you like Tony <laughs> Robbins? I love you. Lois. I don't know enough about Tony Robbins. I haven't read any of his books or been Just to any of his seminars. So. I like him if people think he's scammy. Uh, but anyways, anyone thinks that any like you know, I know. Speaker, I buy into it. Are that all our questions? Basically, because everything falls into the same category. Right. I mean, the last one I just talked to Ashley and Lauren, but it's it's how to work with people who make life miserable seven days a week. So I'm I feel thinking like bosses too. So yeah, yeah, bosses, coworkers. It's a situation that you can't really get out of. I feel like I imagine that's probably tough. Yeah, that's serenity prayer. It's sort of the do what you can that's in your control and accept the things you can't change. So for the short term, if all you can do is you know, put on your, put on an app that helps you to meditate for 10 minutes over lunch or to spend more time with friends that build you up. Um, and then in the long term, look to see if changing that job itself is within your control and something mm-hmm. that you can eventually right. do. I've had, I, I've worked, I've, I've had pretty great career experiences. There are two people in my long career, both in, you know, sort of what I do professionally and the TV version of it. There are two that were pretty horrific. <laughs> yeah. That's like no, that's a no small names. number, yeah. Doctor Mike. Yeah. I feel and, like for this industry, and, that's a small yeah, number. Yeah, it is pretty. I mean, I, I tend to like people, though. I yeah. guess. I mean, but there yeah. were a few that there were two that were pretty awful, like, and I knew I had to. Dirt. I knew I knew I had to. to were they to mean leave. to you? Yes. Are they oh, on air? Are they on air talent? Uh, one yes, okay. one no. Ah. So, like it's, you know, it's, it's interesting, but I also But that's knew also that, the thing is, like, a lot, you can do anything, but there's going to be people that don't like you. Yeah, that's right. It's crazy. And you're going to minimize the time that you spend with these people while you need that gig or that job or that career move. Uh, but I also knew that I did not want to work with these two people for the rest of my career. Yeah, like, you know, because I like to work with good people. I, I like to work with people who are kind to other people. And I, I hate it when people, especially, you know, if you're 
on a set and somebody's mean to like a PA. Oh, that's like oh my, my that's like God. The it's worst so to rude. Me. It's the worst. I've worked in environments where people don't even want to learn their name and these people have worked there for years and yeah. they like, so, I just, it's just so rude. It's like they're people. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, Sorry for the noise in the background, guys. Lois is Lois having, Lois having a good time. She's she right. having, time her life. having so much fun. I can't tell her to stop. She's too goddamn she's, cute. She's throwing her treat to herself <laughs> and then going to catch it. All right. I love that she plays well, with her toys. Well, Dr. Mike, anything else about the, Where can people find this book? Can you read the whole title of it? I feel like it's... Yeah, I know. It is it is a really long book title. So this is Chicken Soup for the Souls. Think, act, and be happy. How to use Chicken Soup for the Soul stories to train your brain to be your own therapist. Killer. Yay, you're the best. And where can people find you? On um, Instagram. DrMikeDow.com, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at DrMikeDow. And 24 Yay. Hour Fitness. And, and you know, sometimes. <laughs> with my boyfriend. Get his autograph. <laughs> He's the warm Dr. Phil, you guys. He is the warm Dr. Phil. Um, before we go, can I just make a couple quick announcements? Yes. Mm-hmm. Announcement, announcement. I'm so excited to announce because I started a GoFundMe for Heartbroken Anonymous last month. Oh. And this month, I have three Heartbroken Anonymous events. So the the first one is in LA, like I shared on the last podcast, on Valentine's Day. Yes. It's free. Um, you can sign up at heartbrokenanonymous.com here in LA that night. And then on Tuesday, the 26th, I'm going to be in Chicago for the first time. Oh, my goodness. Awesome. At Le Meridian Hotel. A lot of people in Chicago have been wanting to go. So you guys can go to heartbrokenanonymous.com to find out the times and info for that. And then on February 28th, which is a Thursday, I'll be doing a pop-up in New York again. So I'm really excited about that. It'll be in the same location it was when I went a year ago. So again, guys, Chicago, New York, LA, all happening this month. That's if you so guys exciting. Want to come, I'd love to meet you. So sign up on heartbrokenanonymous.com or DM me on Instagram. That, that is going rest. to blow up. Yeah. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. A lot of people I'm are so going to go. I'm excited. Thanks, guys. And, and if you want me to hypnotize you, I'm doing full <gasps> day-long workshops in Portland and Houston are my next two cities. Ooh, so when are those fun. happening? Uh, I love when you hypnotize me. Portland is in March and then in Houston, it's on my site. It's on, okay. it's on Dr. Okay. Cool. That's right. awesome, yeah. Naz. Yeah, really I've, I've never been to Chicago and I've been wanting to go to other cities, so I'm really excited to like bring it back to New York and go to Chicago. When he hypnotizes you, do you feel like you're actually not awake? So it almost feels like you're like in a trance and every time he hypnotizes me, I'm kind of like in that state where you know when you're crying, you're like... <gasps> yeah. So then I'm, I'm almost like hyperventilating, like I'm so stressed and he brings me down. I mean, I don't want to give it all away, but basically the way we do it is I go in an elevator and I go mm. five five mm-hmm. floors down mm-hmm. no, I just and then I go 10 floors down. And then it's really, it's this crazy bizarre thing because it's like I could, I could have done this on my own. Yep. And then once I'm on that 10th floor below ground, I see the real version of myself and we talk yeah. about the ideal version of myself. Yeah. And then it's almost like I'm in this other world and I look around and I'm like, oh, everything's fine yeah. here. And this is <laughs> and this is like what what I want to think. And then I get back in the elevator and I come back up and I open my eyes and I'm like, okay, I'm fine. Like that's who I am deep down. And it's yeah. so it's That's cool. It's I'm yeah. not gonna lie. It's so bizarre. I think it's. Spiritual. I would have never it's done cool. it until the day I met you, and yeah. then you're like, "Let's try it," and it helps me so much. I, I had Can an we app do it like now? this. It was like a staircase, <laughs> like going. How long does it take? Do you want to? I, I mean, I don't do know. It? That's not the do you have enough time? time? No. Um, He's I, like, it, come back. Brain you, check. It's usually like at least. It, it's a long time. Yeah. Uh, okay. So maybe it's a, a podcast in itself. Yeah. Do you want to do? Is that yeah. possible to do over podcast oh, though with yeah. one person? Okay, oh, yeah, absolutely. Maybe we'll do yeah. Jared hypnosis. Oh yeah, that can we hypnotize Jared yes. or somebody or you? Yeah, I yeah. love to do. I tune in for Jared, and I also want to yeah. bring. <laughs> and I also want to bring. Uh, yeah, I'm going to bring like some something? some gadgets okay. to help the process. Too. Okay, this is so exciting. We'll yeah. do it. We'll you do it in the next coming month. You think that somebody who is like got a mic in front of them is capable of getting to that state? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. It's a little bit harder because, you know, when you have a mic in front of you, you're sort of mm-hmm. obviously not relaxed because you're engaged. Yeah. But if you can sort of tune out for a second and, and mm-hmm. yeah. I oh, can. my Actually, God. This is a fantastic Ashley, topic. I'm it. so excited. And we can turn the lights off. It's not like we have to have the lights yeah, on. Yeah, we'll too. put the candles on. Yeah. Cool. We'll All right, Dr. Mike, I love when you come on. Thank you so much for here. sharing your Thank wealth you, of ladies. knowledge. And get, Thank you. get his books, guys. And then remember, your subconscious brain can change your life comes out in March.
My literally my nightstand is all your books now. <laughs> <laughs> Can I start giving you like colors of like book covers yeah. so it goes? It's like your bedtime room. stories. Yep. <laughs> all right, that's bye awesome. guys. Bye. I don't get podcast. This podcast is brought to you by Wave Podcast Network. Check out all of our shows, including the Brain Candy Podcast, I Don't Get It, Babes and Babies, Coffee Convos, and Let's Talk About It.